So with the EWS series done and dusted, there's only one race left that really counts in the World Enduro season this year, and that is the Trophy of Nations. Yes, we are here in Finale Ligure to check out all the hottest tech from the riders, the teams, and see what is going on into the pit. So let's dive on in. Right, here we are then, the first bit of hot tech I've spotted in the pits, and it's coming out of Polygon. Yes, this is Matty Stuttard's new Polygon. 170 mil front and rear enduro bike. It is as of yet unnamed, but it's pretty trick. There's obviously a big old nod to Team GB here, which is what he's on. We're sporting Olin's front and rear. We've got the old FSA grid wheels. And there's other really interesting things to note on this bike. So when it comes to setup, Matt is running a Works Components 5 mil reach adjust headset on the front. And on the brakes here, the Magura MT7s have also got these custom oak levers with a reach and bind point adjust, so it's worth checking those out. The mechanics have gone to town on this as well with colour-coded clamps on the brakes, even on the calipers themselves. We've also got colour-coded red and blue uh, bolts down on the rotors, obviously matching in that very fancy SRAM access drive chain as well there. This thing, I reckon, is going to be well up there when it comes to the podiums. A couple more bits of tech I've noticed on this end, some prototype Kenda tyres laced onto those FSA grid wheels. I'm not too sure on the tech going behind them, so it could be a different compound, it could be a different tread pattern. We'll have to find out more as time develops. And lastly, look, there's an O-chain down on there. Now, whether this is to help the suspension work a little bit better, I don't know. We'll have to delve in and ask Matty that itself. But it's interesting, more and more riders are running O-chains. I think just to negate any pedal kickback and get that suspension working as smooth as possible. Great bike and a real interesting to have a look at. Right, my next little wander through the pits takes me here into Danies. Now, first up, it's kid stuff, actually. If we look over here, a new range of kid stuff on the way, including these real cool full face helmets. Details aren't quite announced on there, but I can see inside here, you've got MIPS going on as well. So they're real nice and safe, cool colorways. I'm liking how it all matches together. There's also, Come this side, come on people. We've got a new range of coats and gilets at the back here, the HGC range. Now, from what I can gather, there are two different coats for men, two different coats for women. Uh, one's sort of a more lightweight shell, one's much more heavy duty waterproof. And come around here, take a look at the gilet. So this is sort of, I think this is aimed kind of at your like autumnal or spring riding, because it's got these real nice fleecy inserts on the inside here to keep you nice and warm as well. So some real interesting things coming out of Danies as well. Let's head back out into the pits. Okay, next bike I've commandeered in the pits is this chromed out beauty of Portugal's Jose Borges. It is a Canyon Strive, 160, 170 mil thing, and this has been modded for big mountains. So if we take a quick run through the bike, then 220 mil rotors front and rear, ultra flat lever position, big coil instead of an air shock on the back, but the shapeshifter does still work with the coil shock as well. I spotted another O-chain down here. It seems to be a bit of a trend. SRAM access wireless. But the main thing is, look how cool this thing looks. All completely polished and chromed out. I am liking that an awful lot. So let's just take a closer look at this bike in a few other ways at the moment. So Jose rides a size medium and he's got the reach adjust headset here in the middle setting, making a 480 mil reach on a medium. And I've noticed he is actually about the same height as me, six foot, and I ride a size large, so I might have to have a little play around with my reach adjust setting on that one. And I've noticed actually down in the bottom bracket, he's got one of the muck off tubeless bar plug tools, but actually threaded or inserted into the axle of the crank. So a nice nifty little hack there. Right, I've just come from seeing some very nice custom graphics from Iago Gary, some new Do You Even Drift Bro flame stuff going on, and I've stumbled by the Trek Pits where there is something very fancy, only found on a couple bikes here at EWS, and it is that mystical new SRAM drivetrain. And I've got Hattie Handen's mechanic here working away. Andy Lund, how you doing, mate? Good, thank you. Enjoying the sun in Italy. Yeah. Okay, making bikes go fast sounds good. Can you tell me anything about this new SRAM drivetrain? No comment. Right, well that was uh, insightful. Uh, anything on the new cassette that I think is back there as well? No comment. Awesome, this is going well. And I did actually notice a new chain, and I think is the shifter slightly different? New chain? Ah, uh, no comment. Okay, this guy's playing hardball. Tell you what, does it shift well? Okay, well, that's, that seems to be about as much as we're going to get out of Andy here, but 
I can tell you in the flesh, it does look very interesting um, and something that I would very much like to try. It's very different from previous systems. So that's pretty cool. However, away from that, Hattie's bike is looking pretty rad. So we've got this sort of marbled effect paint job on her Trek Slash 160 Outback, 170 mil up front, another O-Chain. Andy, come on, O-Chains are popping up everywhere in the pits here. Give us a little insight. Yeah, they're pretty popular now. I've seen them on more bikes. Uh, we've found just a bit of testing that you get less pedal feedback. Braking action seems to be improved as long as the suspension action too. So yeah, it's uh, it's been on, on the bike all year. And okay, cool. That's actually sort of the first and most useful um, response we've had actually. A lot of the riders are like, the mechanic put it on there and it's sick. So um, that's pretty cool. Any other bits of note about Hattie's bike up, uh, up for this weekend? Not at the moment. <laughs> oh, this guy's giving nothing away. All right, that's Hattie's bike. That's some trick SRAM stuff. Let's head back into the pits. All right then, I stumbled across Vid Persak, Team Slovenia, in the Orbea pits. Vid, this is a sick paint job and it's got a bit of a special story, dude. If you don't mind divulging, please oh, yeah. tell. Yeah, there is a special bike for me because it's, uh, my mother passed away in this winter and she did all the color designs for my race bike and that's the last one she, she did for me. And yeah, it's a special bike for sure. That's awesome. And I'm, I am loving the green and blue with the yellow contrast. It is looking very nice. It's of course an Orbea Rallon. What size are you running now? Because you, you keep me guessing what sizes you're running. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was a bit of a mixing up this, this season, but uh, finally went from the medium, from the first two blocks to the large size again. And yeah. Back on a large. Back on a large. Come on. Why is that? Yeah, uh, we just uh, kind of like we tested so we get an idea what was better, but the most, the biggest reason was that it was hard to stay in the mid bike, so the suspension, everything wasn't working best way. So with the larger bike, you get more space, more reach, so you are more central and everything works better. Less demanding to ride as well, and just overall better feeling. Okay, mate, well, look, it's a wicked looking bike. I see we got like the full XTR setup, we got the race face wheels, Gal for 200 mil rotors. 200 in the back and 180 in the front. They are S sharp, eh? Smaller at the front? It is, yeah, because um, they are quite powerful and you want to have like this good modulation. We don't want to go oversized because sometimes the tracks we ride can be sketchy and you want to have this nice touch on the on the disc and the brake lever to be smooth and not crash. Well, there we go. Look, the guy who always keeps me guessing with what bike size he's riding with an amazing looking bike with a great backstory. Cheers, Vid. Thanks guys, see you in a bit. Okay, I'm at the EXT stand and we've got the new Araya prototype I have just noticed here, Airshock. And we've got Nicolo from the brand as well. He's gonna tell us a little bit more about it, mate, if you could. Yeah, hello. So, uh, this is the new shock for EXT. Uh, it will be ready, this is a prototype. It will be ready in March, okay. 2023. And um, the main feature of this shock is the double positive chamber. Uh, this chamber, um, this is this could be um, potentially a shock that uh, will uh, imitate the the coil shock. So uh, you can choose the pressure of the two chambers separately, and in this way you can use it uh, uh, for a more uh, progressive or for a more linear feeling. So it will be smoother in the first part of the travel yeah. and uh, more um, strong yeah. in, the, in the last part, just like a coil. That's the main feature. It's the same we have on the, on the fork yeah. and more or less uh, that's it. It's not just crazy enduro bikes you see here at Trophy of Nations. Look at this, yes. Specialized, epic, S-Works. Uh, some rather funky bars going on here and slick tires as well. Yes, pretty wild. Okay, we've swung by the Nuke Proof pits. Have a look at this. This is Elliot Heap's Nuke Proof Giga 275. So smaller wheel out back, big wheel up front, ready to party. And it is full custom, it is looking good. So it's a Vans themed paint job. And it's not just Elliot's they've gone to town on. Note, Dan Booker's, just behind me here, you can see is sort of Aussie themed bike going on. And Keelan Grant of Team Ireland as well has got a Guinness themed bike, delicious. But no, they're looking very factory fresh. So you've got the Nuke Proof Horizon pedals, the Michelin's front and rear, and also rocking the handguards because here in Finale, it can get pretty tight. Check out the details on these.
on closer inspection and this thing is as trick as it comes. Now, I've had a little time to just go around it. Underneath it, look at this. It's a waffle sole, just like an old school Vans and a lot of new school Vans actually. It's so cool and it wraps around the front in that gum color. Obviously we've got the oil slick cassette and chain. I mean, this, is, this bike is brand new built for this race. I know he's running a very short stem as well, whether that's to get the right handling characteristics that he likes. I am not too sure. And also we've got the, the Zip Moto wheels as well. So running those carbon rims, very interesting. Looking forward to seeing this rock those trails. And just checking out Dan's bike, there is, apart from the paint job obviously, a few subtle differences over Elliot's. Notice we, we got a coil instead of an air shock, aluminium instead of carbon rims as well, and flat pedals over clips. So will the thunder from down under reign supreme on those flat pedals? They got a strong team, so we're going to have to wait and find out. But look at that sparkly paint job. Okay, Lapierre pits now, and Craig Miller just disappeared out of shot, but we've got a custom Isabeau Corduria bike building on the back so we've got blue front end i've just seen them spraying up some custom linkages as well the old rattle cans out to go on there so the old red white and blue red back end uh looking real trick we've got some sort of foam covering the uh, outer there keep it nice and quiet just real clean cockpit access gearing again looking very nice will the french women's team take the win it is a strong team but who knows, there's some other strong teams out there. I'm looking forward to it, but it is a very trick, very nice looking bike. And actually, some more tech, come this way with me, people. Come on down, come on down. EWS E uh, happened today, the final round, and this is the winning bike. So actually, this is Adrian Daly's winning Lapierre from it, uh, which again, Craig has done some work on, and there's some cool mods on here. So he's got a multi-tool on here, and rather than it just being strapped on rather messy, it's actually rather nicely Velcroed on. The same with the control unit at the top has been moved from the bars and put on the top tube as well. Just some Velcro, but as extra security, there are some zip ties on there. I spoke to Craig why he did that, and it's actually just to move it out of the way. So if you crash or you bang it with your knee, something like that, it's just not in the line of fire as much. And I've noticed a little chain tensioner going on as well. Some very cool things happening in Lapierre. Okay, one team I've struggled to find actually, but they are pitted just behind me is the Forbidden Synthesis team. But their riders, Reese Werner and Alex Stort, have got some insane custom sprayed bikes. Check these bad boys out. So for Reese, it's a candy red paint job with some maple leaf accents dotted all over it, looking absolutely beautiful for the Canadian team there. And for Alex, well, it's all about that British racing green with gold decals. Oof, yes, please. Very nice bikes. Well, there we have it then. Some of the hottest tech from the Trophy of Nations here in Finale Ligure. There are some incredible looking race machines and stay tuned over on GMBN to see a lot of the race action as well as the EWS channel. I'm out of here though. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I'll catch you later.